Hey, hey, we're back. We're back after such a long time. I know. I know. I know. It's been crazy, right? Um, there we go. Now we're in the main thing. That's much better. That's much better. Look at this. Look at us. Who would have thought? Welcome back, everyone. Um, we're back to English and Chill. Sunday, 1 p.m. London time. I know that that might be very late where you are, or very early, but this is, we live on London time. You know, if you if you want to learn English, you have to live on London time, unfortunately. So I asked you on my Instagram, at Papa Teach Me, what would you like to learn today? English and chill is where you choose the class. Sometimes. Sometimes I choose it. But this one, you choose it. So I had a lot of requests. But the one I really liked was from someone on Instagram called Mori Workout. Great name. Love it. How do you cheer someone up or how do you give a prize with words? I think you mean give congratulations something. Um, I can only use good job and well done. Great question. That's what we're going to do today. I made a video. Um... English expressions of using um, congratulations a couple years ago. I can't believe that's a couple of years ago. It's crazy. But we'll do a bit from that. Also, I made a video about if you like Blackpink, Jisoo from Blackpink, she said her favorite British, British, English. I hope British. I hope Jisoo from Blackpink, all of them prefer British than American. That would be cool. Let's see what you guys think. What do you prefer, British or American? Um, anywho, her favorite phrase in English was, that's a pity. Okay, let's run a poll. Let's see what you guys think. <laughs> It's really interesting. Some people say, oh, British is the easy one and American is so hard and they mumble, blah, blah, blah. But for some people, the complete opposite. I think in European countries, they prefer um, British accents. But in American, in, well, yeah, like Latin American countries, usually people prefer the American accent. But... You're watching me. So I assume, we always assume that British wins. If my American teacher friends ask the same question, usually American wins. So um, this is how we're going to set this up. Let's say that. Um, hmm. Who of you in the comments can I draw? No offense, but I don't like K-pop. You don't have to like K-pop. You just have to like English. You don't even have to like English. It's my job to help you become better. Canadian is also a good one. Yuri Popov, I totally agree. Canadian English sounds really, really polite. I, I love Canadian um, accents. Really nice. Okie dokie. Who can I draw? Who can I draw? Thingy. <laughs> hey, Thingy. How you doing? I remember you, Thingy. Don't worry. 
Hey Chala, how you doing? Uh, although it feels easier to pronounce some words in American accent, I go for British accent. Hmm. Hmm. It's always a mixed bag. First expression for you of today. A uh, mixed bag. This is a good one because um, it just means there's no... Usually when someone asks you, what do you prefer? This or this or... Um, I don't know. What do you have? What drinks do you have? <laughs> Not what drink. That's a bad example. But usually when there's a variety or an option, you don't want to say, well, only this or only this. You can say, mm, it's a mixed bag. Or let's say in my classes. Um, oh, in your classes, do you mostly have French students? I might say, no, it's a mixed bag. French, Portuguese, Brazilian. Um, Spanish. It's a mixed bag. So a group, lots of different things. Pat M, how you doing? Pat M, this is the earliest you've ever commented. And I appreciate you, bud. How you doing? How are you doing? Um, okie dokie. YJ, how you doing, bud? I've got a mixtured English accent. Not mixtured, a mixed, mixed English accent. Um, okay, so this will be the example, but who can I draw? It's really difficult to draw you in the comments because your icon is like this big. I can't see it. Oh, sorry for the hiccups. It's really close to the microphone and I apologize. Oh, well. British accent is losing its popularity. It was 86%. Now it's only 80. What what is going on? What is going on? Okay, I can't. If you have a good uh, profile picture that I can see, tell me you want me to draw you and I'll draw you. Hmm. Okie doke. For now. I don't know. This one. She's kind of feeling a little bit down. If you feel down, it means you feel sad. And uh, Karina, I don't know if you follow Karina, English in Brazil, Karina. We had a great conversation. Um, and she was like, oh, do you want to have a chat today? And I was like, I'm down. And she was like, oh, what happened? You're down? Down. This was over text, so it's difficult to hear the voice. So if you say, I'm down, there are two possible meanings. One, I like that plan. Yeah, I'm down. Let's do that. Yeah, I'm down. Or two, hmm, I'm down. I'm feeling down. And that means this one. That's what this girl's going through. So, hmm. There we go. Dahlia, please draw me. Okay. Dahlia, that is a great name, Dahlia. Okay. Yeah. Try? Again, your thing's like super, super small. I'll try. Uh, so, it's so tiny. I don't think I can. Why did they make it so small, you know? So annoying. Anywho. Let's say a good friend called Ali. <laughs> Wants to say, oh my God, you're down. I want to cheer you up. I want to lift your mood, make you happy. How can I do that? How can I do that? What can I say? So... You remember earlier, I said uh, Jisoo from Blackpink, her favorite English phrase is, um, oops. No. How well have you been paying attention? What was Jisoo from Blackpink's favorite English phrase? Write it in the comments. So, first of all, why is she sad? Why is she sad? You tell me. Uh, 
Do 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 do. Let me see. Give me an idea for a reason that she's sad. Are feel down and feel blue the same things? Absolutely the same. Um, it's more common to say I feel down than I feel blue. F I feel blue is more poetic. So it's not as common. But yeah, you can still use it, of course. And it's still good. So yeah, don't don't worry. You can still say it. Oh yeah! Happy New Year, everyone. G I... I, I haven't seen you since um, last year, so Happy New Year. Wow. It has been a while, yes. Karel Peters, yes, it's been a huge while. A huge while. Nice. Okie doke. Um, she has to go back to school and she's depressed. Nice, I like that. Okay, so Nicoletta. I love that example. Let's use that. Um, I have to go back to school such a shame okay so yes as a lot of you um wrote in the comments jisoo from blackpink her favorite english expression is that's a pity That's a pity. And obviously, um, yeah. he will say that in reaction to the bad news. So she gives bad news. I have to go back to school tomorrow. He might say, well, oh, that's a pity. This doesn't cheer someone up. It just shows empathy, right? So there are ways that we can look at this. So the first one, let's do, um, yeah. It's, you're acknowledging, you're saying, yeah, that's bad. That's it. Um, let's do a more informal expression. You could have, ah, oh, that sucks. Now that's more informal. Um, it's not a swear word. However, I, I've seen in TV shows and movies, American families are like, oh, what's your language? When kids say that sucks, I don't understand why. But I'm British, so they're, they're different there. They, they, the, the, the Americans are weird. What, what do you want me to say? Yeah. Okie dokie. Hmm. Let's have a look. Happy birthday. It was my birthday. Yeah, it was my birthday um, 3rd January, like a week ago. Thank you. Thanks, Chalo. Absolute legend. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. So, hello from your Taiwan fan. Hey, in Taiwan. How you doing? How you doing? I miss Taiwan. I really miss your um, hot pot places. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Okay, right. So, lavender green. Great one. Okay, um, let's do that. What did you write? You wrote... Um, I'm sorry to hear that. So, uh, when you say that's a pity, you can also say that's a shame. Same thing. But um, I would argue that... Uh, if you say that's a pity, that's a shame, be careful how you say it. You you have to show the empathy. If you don't, it can sound sarcastic. Give you an example. Um, I have to go back to school tomorrow. That's a pity. That's a shame. See, the words alone, it's not enough. You need to show, oh, that's a pity. Oh, that's a shame. Put emphasis on that. That's a pity. Oh, that's a pity. That's a shame. 
See, the stress is on that. Um, uh, yeah. Also, I think the way Jisoo said it, she put emphasis on pity. And it, again, it's completely fine. I'm just taking the small details and letting you know how to make it completely natural sounding. That's all. So, yeah. Oh, that's a pity. Doesn't hit the same as if you stressed that. That's all. Ah, ha, ha. Okie dokie. And Nurska has a great example right there. Um, yeah, let's do... No, not that color. The darker one. Green's good. What was it? That one. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's put it over here and you'll see the reason why. If you said, get over it, move on, how does that sound to you? <laughs> sorry again for the hiccups, I'm sorry. How does it sound? Does that sound very um, empathetic? Probably not, right? There we go. Yojo. Sounds dismissive. Well done, Yojo. Exactly that, yeah. Yeah, when you say... Get over it. Move on. It sounds dismissive. It doesn't sound empathetic. And that's what you want to do if someone gives you bad news. But, I mean, yeah, maybe not. Maybe their bad news is something boring. Maybe it's rubbish and you, you want to be dismissive. Maybe. Um, I don't know. Like... What would be like a dumb bad bit of bad news like I don't want to say like my hamster died because nah, I'd feel bad for the person if they if their pet died that's bad even if it's a hamster or a goldfish it's still a pet mm. Ah okay if someone's like crying about um I don't know. Their t-shirt. Their t-shirt broke and now they're crying. Like, it's just a t-shirt. It costs two pounds in Primark. Get over it. Yeah. So, just to be clear, when you say get over it, it means quite literally um, to lose your... Let's say negative feelings. about something so yeah we use this for breakups you're sad that you broke up but after time you get over it you lose those feelings all of them not just negative all right let me get rid of this because this could be confusing for people who just watch just started watching there we go boom done yeah okay so um what have we got some empathetic sounding things to say i'm sorry to hear that that's a pity that's a shame that sucks yeah carolina he should say you'll be fine oh that's a good one yeah i like that one um so let's do a different color now let's do what do you reckon purple purple seems good i'm gonna put it Yeah, you'll be fine. That's like encouraging, right? That's good. But what about things we shouldn't say, but maybe you don't know that you shouldn't say it? Well, 
it's really not helpful to say cheer up i know right that's the obvious thing to say oh cheer up but it doesn't help it's not that good to say um it, just don't you know um if someone if i'm feeling sad and someone says oh cheer up it's not helpful you know um because you're telling someone oh be happy but if they're not you can't just tell someone to be happy it's it's like when you say try and relax like that doesn't work so to say cheer up no no yeah <laughs> completely sounds like he wants to finish the conversation i know right yeah it doesn't sound very like friendly i think sue stop crying yeah right um that's what maybe a parent might say to a young child so these ones i would say absolutely no absolutely no can we do hmm. i still haven't really played with many of these pens that'll do yeah so let's just say those ones no you get the idea Oh, shit. There we go. <coughs> oh, no. I'm dying and I don't have water this time. <coughs> this is terrible. Don't worry. It's not COVID. I tested. We're all good. Ooh, question for you. Um, I heard in some countries that you have to pay for the, the COVID, the tests. In England, we don't. Although, apparently, that's going to change. Do you have to in, in your countries or no? It, is it just free? The, I mean, the little ones that you do at home, not the ones you go to an airport for. Kirill Peters. Yes, we do. Where, where do you live, Kirill Peters? Uh, Lavender Green says we don't in Egypt. Uh, in Australia, we do. I, yeah, I heard in Australia you do. In the US, I heard it was $40. For a test? Are you kidding me? Not even at the airport. Just, just to go to work or to to go to an event. Nuts, right? Nuts. Hey Maya, how you doing? Crying over a t-shirt is a rubbish sorrow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a great way to put it. But yeah, you're right. Um, Regina, we have to pay, and it's quite expensive. Regina, where are you from, and how much does it cost? Oh, you're from Belgium. <gasps> mm. I still want to go to Belgium. I hear it's super nice. Did you hear about the thing? Um, I learned there was a there's a real thing. You can Google this called um, Paris syndrome. Have you heard about this? A thing called Paris syndrome, where apparently it mostly affects Japanese tourists. That you have this. Um, image in your mind of how amazing Paris is going to be and then when you get there and you're like oh this is not like the mo movies at all this is like kind of it's kind of dirty and it's cold and th there's no music everywhere that's all like romantic and nice and people get like really stressed out about it have you heard about that seriously google Paris syndrome I know it, it blew my mind, but I would agree. Yeah. Um, on the note of France, Gennaro. In France, yes, if you're not vaccinated before. Oh, yeah, I heard. Yeah, in France, there's some big changes, right? If you're not vaccinated, you have to pay for the test then in France. Is that right? If I'm understanding that right? I don't know. Um. Cool. Okay, so that 
we would use to cheer someone up. Um, yeah, mostly just show empathy, you know? You don't have... There's no magic spell to make someone happy. Just show some empathy, you know? Be a friend. That's all you need to do. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's a, bit, that's a pity. It's a shame. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Honestly, if it's something serious, you want to go for this one. Someone died. Something serious happened. They lost their job. They broke up with their partner. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, the general one, for most situations, use that sucks. Yes, it's informal, but, you know, the situation might need that. Oh, that sucks. Sorry. And then, of course, that's a pity, that's a shame. It might sound nice, and Jisoo is a legend, and it's her favorite thing uh, to say. You can use it, just be careful with the stress and the intonation. Like I told you before, stress, that's. Ah, oh, that's a pity. That's a shame. Just keep that in mind. You'll be great. You'll be amazing. Be amazing, my guy. Be amazing. All right. Um, Yuki Jirushi. I will remember your name one day without reading it, I promise. In Japan, the cheaper ones, the COVID tests, are about $20. Oof. Oof. It's so expensive. In Argentina, we don't have to pay for it. <gasps> wow. Wow. Alrighty. So that was half of it. The other half was... So Mori workout. If you're watching, thanks for this question. It's a great question. So that was how to cheer someone up. The next one was to... I forgot your wording. It was something like... Um, oh, how can I give a prize with words? I can only use good job and well done. So when you say give a prize with words... I love the way you put that. That's really sweet. What you mean is to congratulate someone. Someone does something great. So let's say... Um, there we go. She did something great. What did she do? What does she need congratulating for? My god, my drawing is rubbish today. I know my drawing is usually like a five-year-old's drawing, but today is just extra bad. Maybe I'm out of practice, you know? My lines are weird, the shapes are all too big or too small. I apologize, this will get better, this will improve. I, I'll, I'll never take a break again, because this is what happens. What did she do? What what happened? What did she, you know? She won a sport competition. She won a competition. I like that. What kind of competition though? You know? We need a type of competition. Let's also make this a bit smaller. I'll do. That's fine. What type of competition? I noticed in the comments earlier, someone said you're going to take the IELTS exam. That's really, really cool. Good luck for it. Um, but you'll be amazing. Don't worry about passing or failing or what your score is. My advice, if you're taking any test, use the first one as a practice. So you get to know what happens. You get to know the format. Um... Use that as the practice, and then the second time, you, you do it to win it, you know? You, you know what to expect. You, there's no surprises. So, you might be amazing, honestly. The first time, you might nail it. But if not, don't worry. I, I always tell people, forget about the first one. That's a practice. Second one is the real one. 
Equestrian competition. A ho You're asking me to draw a horse? I can't draw a horse. Like, kind of looks like she's riding a horse. You know, I do like that. You know what? Yeah, she. Yeah, it's a horse competition now. Uh, <laughs> it's so stupid. How do you draw a horse? What do horses even look like? I've forgotten. Um, let's, uh, they've got these like long faces, aren't they? Like that. Oh God! Oh no! What's happening? With those. With those. Ugh. Sure, that's fine. This looks nothing like a horse, but you know what? We move forward. This looks more like a reindeer, if I'm going to be honest. Or a cow. This kind of looks like a cow. <laughs> This is so stupid. And they have hair. All right, th it's a horse. Fight me, it's a horse. Um, I won a horse. What horse competition is called? It's called a horse competition now. I, d I don't know the technical word and I don't care. <laughs> I won a horse competition. <laughs> The horse is just as surprised. Yeah. So she won a horse competition. How can he say, oh, mm. you tell me. More like a pony. <laughs> Looks like a sheep. It's a wombat. <laughs> I know, right? It looks nothing like a horse, but I'm okay with it. Looks more like a sheep. It's more like a dog. A horse with a wig. <laughs> oh my god. The short legs. I know, right? Yeah. Okay, so what can he say to to say like, yeah. Nah, mm. Okay, so uh, Atomic says way to go. I'm going to put that here. Oh, hello. What's this? Pat M. You are just lovely. Thank you for the super chat, Pat M. You know, you're lovely. You're a lovely person, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, okay, so we've got way to go. I'll talk about which ones you should and shouldn't use and how to use them in a moment, but let's just gather, let's gather some expressions. Oh, by the way, also, um, if you want to improve your English conversation, with me in four classes a month, every month, then um, the first session starts today <laughs> in one and a half hours from now. So you can do it on my Patreon. The link is in the description, patreon.com slash Papa Teach Me. Um, it's a conversation class with me and a small group. Everyone's super nice. We practice your conversation skills. I'll give you correction. We talk about a different topic each time. You don't have to come every session, just whenever you want. It's great fun. It's great fun. And everyone is super, super cool. Um, but yeah, if you want to take advantage of the full four sessions this month, join in the next 90 minutes and you'll be fine. Yeah. British accent is still winning. Still winning. This is lovely. This is lovely. Okay, so we've got way to go. What else do we have? Give me more expressions to use in this situation. Oh, I don't like that color. Go with this one. Nice. Nice. I'm, I am reading your comments, don't worry. <laughs> uh, 
Laura, you forgot that we had class. You're so bad. You're so bad. I'll forgive you though. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, who just wrote that? Natasha. GG. Ooh, Natasha would be a good one there. Okay, what else? What else? Nice. Hmm. All right, so that, I think that one's going to be the best. This is the best selection of things to use. I made a whole video about this. Um, just type in, Papa Teach Me, congratulations on YouTube. Any video, any English lesson that you want to see, just type in Papa Teach Me and then the topic name. I probably have a video on it. So you can find it. You can find it. Greetings from La Paz, Bolivia. Hola. Como estas? I hope, you, I hope your day is going amazing. Yeah. Your drawing is amazing. It's not, but thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? Okay. I am going to use that one. Who wrote that one? Michaela F. I'd go with the simple you rock. Nice. Um, all right. So uh, any more than this would be too much. So let's just go with this one. Um, when can we use each of these things? So the ones in green are the most common ones. They're just the easiest ones to use. Like, of course, you've got just the adjectives. Awesome. Amazing. It's a simple, but you know those. The most common ones I personally use. I can't speak for everyone. Just personally, I use those two most, most often. Nice. Nice one. Uh... Actually, I don't use nice one. I just use nice. Nice. <laughs> Most of the comments with me and my friends in our WhatsApp groups are just that. Just me replying with nice. That's it. Um, If you want to be a bit, not weird, but you, you can. And if you have like, um, you know, native English speaking friends, Give them one of these, they'll appreciate it. Nice. It's just like a funny, silly way of saying nice. Instead of nice, nice. It, it's a stupid way of saying nice, but if you have cool friends, say it. They, they'll like it. They'll think it's funny. I think it was in, um, if you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, it's from that. So that's good. Nice one, fine, not as common. But it's fine. Well done. Yeah, this one is more formal. So let's put an up arrow. Oh, dear. The up arrow means it's more formal. Don't forget. Yeah. Well done. It sounds more formal. It doesn't sound as friendly. I mean, it is, but... It just sounds more formal. That's all. It's still good. The next one is the obvious one. And we need to do pronunciation with it. I know lots of people have problems pronouncing this word. Congratulations. So let's do it in halves. Lations. That should be easy. Lations. Say it with me. If it's difficult, you need the practice. Lations. Lations. Okay, next one, congrat, congrat. This middle bit is just a ch, ch sound. Congratulations, congratulations. 
The stress is right here on graph. Congratulations. And you'll notice here is that glottal stop. Congrat. Congratulations. Congratulations. So remember those two things. Stress here. Gra. Congrat. The little glottal stop here. Ch. Congratulations. Congratulations. You just said congratulations. Well done. Really, really good. Cool. Um, next one. Proud of you. I use this with my friends. Yeah, it's more formal, but um, it's really good with your friends. It just sounds nice. You know? Well done, man. Proud of you. It's the extra bit of validation. It's good. And uh, the next one, you rock. Fine to use, not as common. Um, I might use this with someone I don't know very well. But I still want them to like me. I don't know why, but this feels like I don't know the person. Ah, you rock. I don't know much about you, but you rock. You know? Yeah. I feel like people say this to celebrities. Or people who they don't know. Hmm. Okay, in these last two, way to go, good job. Um, good job is fine. Way to go. In American English, yeah, probably it works really well. But in British English, it doesn't sound that natural. Way to go, man. No. British English, I would just say don't use it. It's easier not to use it. There's so many other options. So British English, leave out way to go. If you're doing American English, um, oh, way to go. Hmm. It sounds fine, I guess. I'd need an American to verify, though. It, yeah. yeah. Um, and finally, GG. If you play video games, this one is for you. When you finish playing a video game, which is a competition with someone else, GG. Stands for good game. GG. You could also say GG's. Um, especially if there are many people. GG's, my man. GG. Good game. So you have tons of options for tons of different situations. Okay, final questions then. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions whatsoever. I'll try and answer a few of them before we finish. So if you need clarification, if you want to know pronunciation of anything we've done today, let me know. It's your final, final opportunity. Perida from Kolkata. Remember me? Ishtab Biswas. Did we speak a while ago? I feel like we spoke a while ago. GG sounds like a bit not good for me. Yeah, you don't have to use it. I mean, it's mostly used for video games. So... Don't feel like you have to, you know. The use of ain't in British English. I, I made a video. I think I made two videos about this. Again, type in Papa Teach Me ain't. You'll, you'll find at least two videos about that one. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Noise. Noise. Um... I use GG so often. <laughs> awesome. Good for you. <laughs> Tor indeed. Right, yeah. Um, Olivia Rodrigo fans. Good for you. You might have noticed that that song is meant to be sarcastic. So if you don't know this song, this girl um, noticed that her ex-boyfriend found a new girlfriend and she's like oh good for you it's it should be sarcastic of course she doesn't mean congratulations she's like oh well done oh. you know so good for you usually 
sound sarcastic. It can sound genuine. Like, are oh, you, I don't know, you got into university. Man, good for you. That's, that's a difficult university. Good for you. If you say it in person and it's really obviously sincere, then you should be fine. <laughs> yeah. Then it, then it'll be good. Then it'll be good. Korean kids used to say it in a bad way. Say what? GG's? What does it mean for Korean kids? I didn't know that. Nice. Okay. Final question. Nicola Tamel. Ali, do you say take to hospital or to the hospital and have or take a shower? Have a shower, take a shower. Both are fine. Um, Take to hospital or to the hospital. I'm going to take him to hospital. I'm going to take him to the hospital. Again, both are fine, but we use the hospital when we want to be more specific about which hospital we mean. Like... I'm taking him to the hospital that's that way. Or I'm taking him to the hospital 30 minutes away. Being more specific. However, however, use them both in the same way. No one will think it's weird. That's it. That's it. So um, thank you all for your questions. This has been really, really fun. Um... I'll be back next Sunday. I know. New year. New channel. Who this? I'll see you next Sunday. 1 p.m. London time. Sunday. English and chill. You choose the, the topic and I'll teach it. Also, um, yeah, if you want to join my English conversation sessions, feel free. The link is in the description patreon.com slash papa teach me you get an ebook for free um you can do writing practice for free i'll correct it and you practice your english speaking skills with me there's more info like in the in the link but if that's how you want to improve your english that's the best way so i'll see you next sunday thank you everyone for watching um, thanks, Kirill. Thank you, Chala, Lady Francis, Nicoletta. Great questions today, Nicoletta. Uh, Tomek, nice one. Um, Pat M, thank you. Blaney, equestrian. Oh, that's why you said about the horse. Nice. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Yuki G Jirushi, GG today. Looking forward to you next, next Sunday. Looking forward to seeing you, Yuki. You absolute legend. Thingy. Always a pleasure. And YJ, best friend. I mean, what can I say? What can I say? And at the end of the class, British accent has 68% of the vote, which was your favorite accent, British or American. Always glad to see that. <laughs> All right. See you later, everyone. Bye.